in my last video, I took you on a tour of my 2024 Notion workspace. And if you've not seen that video, then do go and check it out using the link above here. So today I'm gonna to share with you three key tips to help you create an amazing Notion dashboard yourself. Plus, I'm also gonna share three bonus tips. So do make sure you hang around until the end of the video. First up for your dashboard, I would suggest you spend a little bit of time planning your layout first. So you can see here that I'm currently in um, a talk of Whimsical, which I shared in the previous video. And I've just spent a little bit of time planning out what I want to go into each of the areas. So at the top, you can see that we've got just the dashboard, which is the title of the page, um, and sort of some aims of what I want the dashboard to do. There's a high level view, like a control panel, and I also wanted to use it up as a jumping off point to different areas of my workspace. So I've just put a placeholder in for the icon and the banner. So the first two things, we've got the departments, which are just going to be links. And then we've also got their th the horizon, so different time periods. I'd recommend when you go and design your uh, dashboard that you don't try and think about what specific database you want to put in when you design it. Instead, think about what functions you want it to do. So for example, here, we can see that on the left-hand side, I just want to um, see my progress on my goals. I don't mind what where it comes from, but I just want to know how I'm progressing on my goals. In the middle, I want to be able to see my uh, key results and my objectives. So I want to be able to see an overview and I want to be able to update them. And then on the right-hand side, I want to know what are my most important tasks. All right. Then in the middle, I've got tasks over three days based on their energy, um, uh, highlighted projects, then I want to be able to see my reference material, and that could be notes, it could be based on the areas, it could be based on uh, resources, all sorts. So I just want to be able to say, see all of my resource material, and then my various timelines on projects, objectives, and goals. So there, it's all about focusing on the functionality first. Then when we get into Notion, you can then think about how you're going to achieve it. So um, that's uh, how we go and set up the layout. And if I just jump into Notion, we can then go and see that in reality. So here um, you can see again that we've got the navigation. So we've got the different areas of the business and the horizons. Then we've got here on the left hand side, the goals, the OKRs. Uh, on the right hand side, we've got the uh, the weeks and also we've got the uh, the, the big three. Uh, then we've got underneath the tasks, projects, quick actions. And then as we scroll a little bit further down, we've got the reference material. And here, as you can see, we've got areas, resources, notebooks and notes. Uh, and then underneath, we've got the timelines as well. So hopefully then that goes and shows you how we take it from creating a layout and then we then go and translate that into Notion. Because although Notion's great for having different blocks and moving things around and it being very flexible, it can still take a little bit of time to unpick things. So just spend 10, 15, 20 minutes in something like Whimsical to go and design a rough layout first before you then start trying to put in blocks and pages and databases, etc. Secondly, I'd recommend that you use linked databases. So as I shared in the previous video, Try and keep all of your databases in one place. This is great for managing them, keeping an eye on them, and reducing the risk that some data will be uh, deleted or that the database itself will be deleted. Um, so here again in my dashboard, uh, we can see that we've got the OKR section, and this is actually made up of two different databases. We've got an objectives database, and we've also got a key results database, and then they are joined together with a relation. So let me give an example of how this works. So I'm currently in the tasks area of my dashboard. And if I just go here to the plus, the first thing we need to do is select the data source. So this is how you can go and actually um, have views for different databases within the same area of a page. Uh, now I want to do a view for overdue tasks. So again, I'm gonna select the tasks database. And you can see here that it's gone and pulled through all of the views that already exist for this database. So this is really good. If in the original database, as um, somebody who's sort of keeping on top of your workspace, you go and create some well-formed views, uh, you can then go and access those and copy them into different areas of your workspace. So if I just click here, show 10 more, and I'm gonna scroll down and we can see here that we've got an overdue tasks one here at the bottom. So I'm just gonna go and find that one, click on the overdue tasks, and it's now gone and copied that view. I don't want to make any changes or rename it or anything, so I'm just going to go and close it. So now we've got overdue. I'm just going to hide the database title. So here we've got overdue here, as well as, well as our energy and our top three. So it's a great example of how we can access databases throughout our workspace, copy the views um, and see information in lots of different ways uh, within a certain area. And this is why I recommend that you think of what's the area for rather than just thinking about what database I'm gonna, uh, am I gonna put in this section. 
if there's something you'd like me to feature in a video in the future, then do go and drop a comment down below and I'll see what people are interested in and hopefully be able to make a video to help you in the future. Lastly, I'd recommend that you use links throughout your workspace. Now, in terms of navigating, of course, you can go here to the left hand side. We've got this side panel and then you can click into the different pages, etc. Uh, but as you can see, either you've got to go and make it appear um, or you've got to go and have it permanently on the left hand side and then it uses a little bit of your screen real estate. Instead, use the power of links and you can link to a whole host of different things. So at the top here, we can see that I've got just normal text and all I've done is pasted over the top a link to a page. So for example, if I go to marketing here, it brings up my marketing dashboard um, and it's here under the marketing and then the marketing home uh, page. So it's navigated uh, to this certain area of my workspace. And then if I just go back to dashboard, it takes me back to that dashboard. So it makes things really, really easy for hopping around and it's sort of joining all of these different parts of your workspace together so that you can quickly move through it. Um, now, as well as linking to pages, you can also link to certain blocks. So let me give you a couple of examples. The first thing is if I bring up a page here on the left hand side, if you just right click on it, you'll see that we've got copy link. So if I just go, uh, for example, and uh, copy, uh, click this one, copy link. If we just put in a test bit of text and then just go and highlight that text and press uh, paste or control V on your uh, on your keyboard. Now it's pasted over the up top of that text. And if I click on it, it will then take me to that page and then I can just go and uh, hop back again. So that's one way of doing it. Or if you're on any page, so for example, let me go to, um, let's go to our uh, OKRs. So if I go to here, if you just go and press Command and then L on your keyboard, you'll see that it's copied the link uh, to the clipboard. So now if I then go back to the dashboard, so if I go here and then dashboard, and let's put in um, another test two, uh, paste over the top, paste uh, now again it's done the same thing so just click on that it will take us to our OKRs and then I can hop back again so there's a couple of ways that you can copy links but by putting these and throughout your workspace you're creating these routes for you to quickly jump through different areas um, so that's really useful but secondly you can also go and um, copy links to actual blocks instead so for example let's say that I wanted to quickly hop down to my timeline here um, so rather than scroll I can actually just go and click here and we've got actually copy link to block so if I copy that one and then near to the top let's just say that I wanted a quick link down to timeline so I'm going to type in timelines and if I go and select that text and then uh, press paste over the top Rather than jumping to the page, it's actually going to jump to that block. So if I now go and click on timelines, it then goes and takes us all the way down the page. It's highlighted it and we can see that we're now at the timeline section of that page. Um, so think about where you can put these. I've got them, as you can see, I've got them on my OKRs here. I've got them on my goals. So it's about creating those portals, those wormholes throughout your workspace to help you to move really really quickly as i mentioned at the start of the video i've got three quick tips also to help you in your dashboard layout the first one is if you look at this page you may think that it's made up of three columns so we've got one column here and then we've got another column here in the middle and then one column on the right hand side but there's actually a break across the middle here and let me show you why in the OK, okr section if i go to overview you'll see that we get all of these different okrs open and if i go and just put in a couple of returns as i put a return it actually moves all three columns down um, and let me show you how i do this so uh, if i just go and select a block and I, if i drag this down you can actually see there's a horizontal line which is cutting um, an invisible horizontal line that's cutting across all three of those columns so it's actually three columns a horizontal line that goes across the whole way and then another three columns and what that means is that if any of these sections for example if this was a calendar if this opens um, a long way um, it doesn't just go and shove down the middle portion it goes and moves the whole portion down all three columns as you can see there so that's a little neat trick if you want to keep things all aligned uh, in a certain way uh, the second trick is uh, to use toggles. Now, another way of sort of organizing and keeping a lot of information uh, in one place uh, and out of the way is to use a toggle. So if you just press the greater than symbol on your keyboard and then space, this creates a toggle. 
and then in here you can put all sorts of things so different blocks um, databases um, pictures all sorts of things and then by clicking the toggle you can then go and hide them so I've not used that many within my workspace because I like to just land on things and not have to be clicking in loads of different areas um, but if you do want to save some space uh, then toggles are a really good way uh, to go and uh, hide it places and make them easily uh, accessible my last tip for this video is to think what do you want visible above and below the line and what i mean by this is this is sort of my current view on my laptop um, and the information that you can see and clearly it's starting to get cut off here so when you're choosing views when you're choosing what information you want to look at uh, when you're choosing your layouts have a think about what you're happy to scroll down to look for and what you want to see straight away when you land on a page. So for me, I want to see how I'm progressing on all of my goals and my OKRs. Reference material that you can see here, timelines, I don't need to see that. If I want to, I can just very quickly scroll down to access it. Now, you may have seen some people who are selling or giving away some free templates online have these dashboards and they're about 20 feet long and everything is underneath each other in a massive long list. Now, that looks great if it's a picture on Twitter and you want to go and market your templates, but in reality, having to either sort of scroll all the way down or click in certain areas is really inefficient. I like having sort of more small pages where they're just sort of self-contained within your window. So for example, I can go to marketing here and I can see almost everything. And then if I want to go through to YouTube where I make those videos, I can click and again, I can see everything. And then I can quickly hop back and I can hop back to marketing and I can hop back to the dashboard. So it's, it's in smaller um, windows of views and I just click through to them rather than having one, but having to scroll through loads and loads and loads of different areas to try and find what I'm looking for. So have a think when you design your uh, area, what you want to have below the fold and what you want to have in a different page. You can see more about my 2024 Notion workspace setup in the video just here. So do go and check that out. Do go and hit the subscribe button. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And if you've enjoyed the video, please do give it a like. I'd really appreciate it. But other than that, thanks for joining and I'll see you in the next video. See ya.